can actually get the arch to form. And uh, it's assumed that the total gap is going to be divided equally between the two sides of the wall, with the maximum gap being controlled by the wall geometry, which that formula is shown right there. And like I said, the gap can be half on each side, and it's going to create the, gap, the closing of the gap. It's going to crack still, and you're going to get that force with the clamp. Okay? All right, and this is pretty much the exact same as the uh, three hinge arch. You have the deflection given, and then you can calculate the uh, uh, specific stress on the arch as well. The exact same way, the exact same formula, but with delta G instead of delta not. Okay. All right, so now we're going to talk about how to design those arches. Uh, basically, it would be really easy if we uh, do the height and thickness ratio to be less than 25. So essentially you just say the max stress is going to be this equation with Fij being the lesser of the mortar joint and the compressive stress of the mason. Mm -hmm. right. And so we're going to neglect the supports, the deflection of the supports because we're going to assume they're rigid, which is a pretty good assumption to make. Um, and these are the, equation, the equations to find the allow the load, load on the uh, arch by the, thick, the, the uh, thickness to height ratio and the compressive stress as well as the factor. And this is just basically a quick little table that you can use to design it. It's very easy. You just pick out your compressive stress, you have your thickness to height ratio, pick out the lateral load, or you can use the equation. So, we just going to a little example real quick. Basically, you have a masonry infill wall that is built solid, it has a rigid concrete frame around it, and you're asked to determine the ultimate lateral load for the 6 inch hollow box if the compressive strength of the masonry is 2500, and it sends you a tight nest in work. Okay, so from that, you look in the MSJC and find the strength of the hip, the mortar, and it's actually 1800 psi, so it's less than 2500, so you need to use that for your F prime J. If you plug into your equation with your 5.65 inch hollow box, plug that in, you get 1.68 psi or 241.3 psf for the wind load, which is pretty good. Right. So, now we're going to move on to the regular arches, if you will. Uh, the vertical arches, I guess. Uh, basically, there's two different kinds. You have major arches and minor arches. Basically, the length and their uh, span to rise ratio are different. Basically, minor or smaller. Which is essentially what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, you have tons of different types. Here's just a few pictures of the ones I found you have flat or jack, if you will, arches, segmental, which is that one over there, uh, semicircular, and the gothic arches. Uh, so here's just kind of some of the terminology that goes with an arch. You have your rise, you have another rise, which is pretty close to the same. You have the crown, which is the top, the extratos, which is the top fiber, and the intratos, which is Bottom fiber, as well as those two different span lengths and your abutment. And of course, the depth is the thickness of the arch. Okay. So, when you do arch design, you actually have three different failure methods generally. You have rotation, sliding, and crushing. Rotation is generally neglected because that only happens if there's tension in the system. And we assume the tension to be zero because it should be completely in compression. Uh, sliding happens if the two different units in the arch slide past each other due to friction angles. And crushing happens if, well, it has too much compressive stress in the system. Alright, so crushing, it depends essentially on your rise to span ratio and your span to depth ratio. So once you, if you know those, you can actually calculate that on a chart, which will give you your 
your load over 2H, which is your H is now your thrust, and W is your uh, kind of like your resultant force, if you will. Uh, it'll allow you to calculate the thrust very easily if you know those two, and it'll allow you to calculate the stress pretty easily as well after that. Here's a chart that I was telling you about that allow you to get your W over 2H value if you know your S over D or and your uh, R over S. So you just pick your span to depth ratio line and you have the right to span ratio. You pick it, you go over, pick the value, and you solve for H. Now, S equals S over D equals zero, it's not on here. It's actually just a flat arch. But it's not on here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about sliding. Um, basically, sliding happens if uh, your angles are too high and uh, you have beta equals phi minus gamma. And as it says, angle, phi is the angle between the reaction force and the horizontal or the uh, thrust force. And gamma is the angle of the mortar joint with the vertical. Okay, which is shown pretty much right there, right there, right there. And you can calculate. Uh, gamma using this equation if it is a uh, segment to the arch. No, I'm sorry. If this is a general equation, if it's a segment on arch, it's going to be s over 2r. It's not inverse. Okay. So, once you know all of those, you can actually solve for the uh, shear force in this structure and the uh, shear stress. This is the equation that you don't exactly know why. That's what they used. <laughs> so once you have all that, you can actually pretty much know everything you need to do to do an example or design. So let me do an example really quick. Basically, we have a segmental arch that is supported by an unreinforced eight-inch hollow low grade wall. One end of the arch will be 24 inches from the wall. Okay. So the given data is it's 72 inches long, it's 12 inches deep, and it has an eight-inch breadth. It rises six inches. As the uniform load of 1,000 pounds per foot with a 2,000 psi masonry, and they allow shear stress is 34 psi, and they're using high best water. So, the first thing we're going to do is calculate the uh, rise to span ratio and the span to depth ratio. If we calculate that, it's going to be 6 inches over 6 feet, so 72 inches, it gives you 0.083. And then the span to depth ratio, exact same thing as 6. So if you go back to the chart, you can do your 6 and 0.083. It gives you about 0.53-ish. So you get that. So, that, so you can solve for W over 2H now. And with W equals 1,000 pounds per foot over 6 feet, it gives you 6,000 pounds. So you can now solve for H, the thrust, which is now 56, 60 pounds. So, once you have that, you can find the maximum compressive stress in the member, which is just 2H over the BD, and that's determined to be 118 PSI. And if you look at the allowable compressive stress, it is 400 PSI. I don't know if that's right. That's what they use in the example, and I don't know why they use 0.2. It's probably the old value. Yeah. It's probably 0.25 now. Is our Compressive stress. Yeah, I, that's what they used, so I used it, but either way, it'll be good no matter what. So, once you got that, now you're going to check for slice. Uh, you can solve for tangent of gamma using that formula right there. You get that, it gives you a gamma of 18.833, and you actually assume the friction angle of 28%, which is pretty close to the maximum. So you can solve for beta, and with, with beta, it's just phi minus gamma, and that, and then you can solve for sine of phi for the shear force equation, which is going to be right here. But you actually need to solve for the reaction force first. You use it, solve by Pythagorean's theorem, which is just the load and the thrust force. So you have that, you have that, and you get the shear force. And then you can check, check the shear stress as well. And 
gives you that, and it's below the maximum allowable shear stress. So you're good.